So in this mini lecture, we are trying to understand, the main objective is to try to understand the importance of databases in internet web applications and mobile apps. Um, databases work in conjunction with web applications, web servers. So it's very important for us to understand the role of databases and a little bit of history of how databases became um, very prevalent. Um, so here's a quick um, check on your internet history. Blank is the experimental network that formed the backbone of the internet. Probably many of you know this answer, but it is ARPANET. Um, so let me just type that in there. Okay, so it's ARPANET is the experimental network that formed the backbone of the internet. So it's important for us to historically think about databases. Um, the internet was created um, with the ARPANET in the 1960s and grew to connect what we call as local area networks together. In the early 2000s, websites started to appear, which allowed people to add content and interact with websites. So most of what people do today on web apps and smartphones depend a lot on databases. So that's one part of what people do a lot. So if this, I like to show this um, timeline in terms of how the web um, has developed in terms of the different applications or the semantics of information connections. And as we can see here, um, from Web 1.0 in the 90s to Web 2.0 in 2000s. Um, and as we look here, we can see this is where we have wikis, web logs, like keyword searches. And then we have moved on to more um, semantic or search engine based searches and into distributed networking. And now um, as we um, enter into web 4.0, we're looking at more AI based or intelligent personal agents. So it's important for us to keep in mind that this web 2.0, the beginnings of web 2.0 is where databases started becoming an integral part of the web connections, just because when people have to search and look up and retrieve data, databases started becoming a very important part of that process. Um, so here's another question actually for us. What change did Web 2.0 bring to websites? And the answer to that would be the ability um, for end users to interact with websites. So that's one of the major changes that Web 2.0 brought in was moving away from static web pages to web pages where people could enter, search, and look up information. So let's, for example, look at an example database here um, that we always use. Um, let's look at Amazon. So if this is a good example of just understanding um, how databases uh, work with websites. So what we have is a web portal here of Amazon. This in itself is not, we cannot call it a database, but this is a web portal that interacts with database. So if I want to search for um, database books, for example, I can come here and search. And when I'm searching, this um, search engine or the, of Amazon is contacting um, the database to get the answers for these results. What are some database books that we have? If I put this term, of course, I can change my search term and my results are going to be different. But this whole process is an example of how we can search a database. So you can go to Zillow, GGC, wherever we are, we are to some extent interacting with a database to fetch this data and present it to us. Now, all of these might not be relational databases, but they all serve the same purpose of fetching or retrieving data and presenting it to end users. So end users are dependent on databases, or we can also say that businesses and different departments are dependent upon databases. So here, if you're thinking about a typical organization that have different departments, you can see how these arrows here represent the interaction or the dependability of um, organizations on getting data pertaining to account, for example, employee information, loan information. These are all examples of how data can be organized and how people are dependent on using this data 
on a daily basis to run their business process and applications. So when we start to think about databases, it's important for us to understand the role that databases play in businesses. And as we move on into this course and learn further, you will also start thinking about a business and thinking about the types of data that businesses have to keep track of. Now, that is very specific to a business. So that's why when we think about databases, it forms an integral part of the business operation. So it's very important for database administrators and managers to work very closely with the business so that we can understand what the business requirements are. So for example, let's start thinking about a typical business like a bank. Um, when we start thinking about databases in this environment, we have to first start thinking about what kind of data do we think a bank would need to store? So take a moment to think about that. And, um, you know, I'm also going to come up with some examples and hopefully some of those examples are what you thought about. So in this case, when we're thinking about a bank, we could definitely say that a bank would need to keep track of customers like first name, um, customer last name, you know, um, customer's address, you know, um, customer social security number, um, customer account number. So these are just examples and so on and so forth. So when we think about a business and the role of databases, we have to think in sp specific to that business, right? So for example, if I start thinking about what was, a, what did customer eat for breakfast or um, you know, how many miles did a customer travel in a particular day? Those kind of data is not relevant if you're thinking about a bank environment. So we can track many things, but we have to think about the business, um, the mission of the business, the, the business transactions that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's how we can start thinking about the data that a business would need to house or store in a database. So. Again, to put it all back in perspective, databases are used to store um, data for an organization. Um, it's used to retrieve this data and also help to manipulate this data in different ways so businesses can use at, look at different sets of data and of course use this all for better productivity, for planning and for processing.